Hey, I'm Isabel Burkhaw, and when I was 12 years old, I founded a multi-million dollar bath and body products company called Da Bomb Bath. After five years of building my own brand, I've discovered a passion for helping young and innovative entrepreneurs tell their stories. Hopefully, you'll be inspired by the guests here on build a biz and maybe even motivated to start a business of your own. Let's get into it. This is build a biz with Isabel Burkhoff. Hey everybody, it's Isabel and welcome back to build a biz. I'm here with a super cool guest today. His name is William Sawalich and he is a young race car driver hoping to someday make it to the big leagues. William, thank you so much for joining me here today. Yeah, it's an honor to be on the show. For sure. I guess I just kind of want to start with the obvious, which is how did you get into race car driving? Um, I've always had an interest with cars. Um, I first started out liking Monster Jam and uh, going to all those events. And my friend told me about NASCAR and I was just obsessed with it. I went to a couple of races and I wondered myself how I could get into NASCAR and race that. So I didn't know that you had to start at lower ranks and work your way up and be good enough. Um, so I started in quarter midgets in 2016 when I was about nine. And <clears throat> I did that for four years and then I moved on to legend cars. And I did that for two years, two and a half years. And now I'm in what's called the Prolate model. So it's a full body stock car. And um, I'm just starting that. That's awesome. So could you explain what those different levels are and how they differ from each other? Um, so quarter midgets is basically a go-kart that has a lawnmower engine in it, a glorified lawnmower engine. So they go about 40 to 60 um, on a fast track and then a legend car that is a 1934 Ford Coupe um, chassis and it has a Yamaha FZ09 engine and it can go about 120 miles an hour. They race uh, from quarter mile tracks to three eighths mile tracks and also road courses um, which are turning left and right and a pro late model that has like a 400 horsepower engine in it and it goes on half mile tracks so and it's it's much bigger than a legend car in a uh, quarter midget so that's super cool that you know all that you're definitely the only 14 year old um, that i know that knows that much about um car engines and stuff like that uh how did you go about getting your hands on one of these cars uh well i started looking on youtube just like ways to race and i found out about quarter midgets and uh, we contacted guy to sell us one and we got it and um, we went to a track um, in Elko, Minnesota to go test and uh, see if I liked it and I, I loved it and I did my first race and I won my first race. Wait, you won your very first race? Yep. That had to have felt pretty good. Oh yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing at that time but it was, it was pretty good. Is it a pretty common thing to win a race? Uh, other people win. It's very hard to win uh, races. So maybe it was just a little bit of beginner's luck that motivated you to go on and win more races um, through actually learning more about race cars. Um, how do you feel when you don't win a race? Um, I, I'm not that discouraged. So it's a team effort. Like if my team doesn't have my car right, it's fine. It, it happens. And if I don't do something right, I have to learn how to do it right every time. And um, I just try my best in the next one. Yeah. So when you say do it right, could you maybe walk us through what exactly you're trying to do right um, and what that process is like um, that goes into actually racing the car? And I know you mentioned like a team, so I'd love to hear more about that as well. So my team, they'll make adjustments on the car, like with shocks and, and chassis and all that to uh, make it either turn better or like not spin out. Um, and it, like if I'm saying I mess up, that could either be like not making a good pass to pass another car for position or um, or not or like spinning out, making a bad mistake, not hitting the apex of the corner to go faster. Um, it, there's a million different things you can do wrong. Mm, that'd be really hard to remember all those uh, different strategies. Do you have like a racing coach or anything to help you? Yep. So I have a coach that, so I actually have a headset in my ears when I'm racing and so does my coach. So he'll tell me 
like what I did wrong and how to fix it right there on the track. Um, so I can learn and do it right next time. Nice. So they're like your guy in the chair. I don't know if you've seen Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming, but it's like my favorite movie ever. And Ned, which is Peter Parker's best friend, says in um, Spider-Man Homecoming that I'll be your guy in the chair, you know, like I'll be your eyes from above. <laughs> So that's really cool that you have a coach. And then I also noticed that, you know, in addition to that, you're also very proactive. You know, like you you went on the internet and did lots of research and figured out how to get your foot in the door, if you will, um, in the racing industry. Uh, I guess I'm kind of wondering, what are some of the different components that make racing a sport? And I know that one of your pet peeves is when you say, or when people say that racing isn't a sport. Um, so what would you say to those people? Yeah, um, it's mentally challenging and physically challenging. Uh, NASCAR drivers, they can lose up to uh, 10 pounds of water weight in a race just from sweating. And um, it's it, it can get to 120 to 140 degrees in a car. And it gets, it gets pretty hot when you have a double layer fire suit on. Um, and like if the car overheats, it gets even hotter and you can get dehydrated really fast. If you don't stay on top of your hydration, you'll get dehydrated in like mid-race. Uh, it's very physical because you have to keep yourself up during a race. You can't be leaning side to side or it'll mess you up or your vision, you can't see. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically why it's physically demanding and mentally demanding. So you can lose 10 pounds of water weight. That's crazy. How do you stay hydrated? Uh, if if you go under caution, which is like you slow down because there's a wreck, you can drink your water bottle. When, during a race, if I'm really hot, I just chug my water bottle the, the whole time during that caution because it gets really bad. Oh, okay. So the caution, it would probably then be compensated for later on um, because of that accident. Uh, William, have you ever been in an accident before? Yes. Uh, in a quarter midget, it's, it's possible to flip. Uh, I've done that. A bunch of times in that car um the that those cars usually wreck a lot because there's kids driving them and they're less experienced um and then in the legend cars i haven't flipped thankfully yet and um i've been in some pretty bad head-on collisions uh i totaled the car like the whole chassis and metal was bent in it but um in the big cars the wrecks can get more serious because they're going faster uh, but I haven't been in any bad wrecks yet because I've only done three races in it. That's crazy. And I'm also in awe about how casual you are about all this. You were just like, oh, people get in wrecks all the time. Um, what are like some strategies that uh, your coaches have taught you to uh, be safe during these wrecks? Yeah, uh, it just happens so fast. You have to think really fast. What What they tell you to do is get your hands off the steering wheel because the wheels can rip one way or the other and break your wrist. Um, so you have to put your hands on your chest and just brace for impact. That's insane. When you say brace for impact, that kind of gives me the chills, uh, because I can't even imagine my 14 year old brother in that situation. What do your parents think about that? Um, well, when I get into like every new car, my mom always gets nervous that I'm driving that because she doesn't know what could happen. But uh, the cars, they're very safe, and my mom has gotten used to it now. Uh, my dad, he doesn't come to very many races because he has to work, but um, he's he still gets a little nervous, but he's kind of mellowed out now. That's good, and it seems like you're pretty mellow about it, too. Yeah. When you're in the car, you just think about how or to go fast. That That's basically all you're thinking about and trying to pass people. So, obviously... Like you just said, one of the main strategies, I'm assuming, would be to go as fast as you can um, without losing control. And I remember that when I ran track, which is a little bit different than uh, driving a race car around a track, but when I ran track and we were running the 200 or the 400, they would say, sprint the straights and, um, you know, a little do a bit of a slower sprint on the outside of the track. Uh, is that similar at all to a race car track strategy? So it's, it's kind of like saving your energy, except for you want to save your fuel so you don't burn that up when you run out of fuel. And you want to save your tires so they have more grip at the end of the race so you can battle for the lead. 
Um, so you kind of have to take it easy and for 50 laps because they're 75 to 100 lap races. Um, and by the end of the race, you want to have enough uh, grip to be fast and uh, keep up with the leaders. Wait, hold up. We need to go back to the fact that you can go 50 to 75 laps in a race. How long does it take one to do that? Uh, well, if there's a, I've had a race that took two hours, but there's a lot of cautions and a lot of wrecks. So we had to slow down a lot. But uh, my last race that I did, it took about 45 minutes. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. For a race, but some some tracks have time limits on their races, so they don't run too long, and some don't. That is crazy. So it's almost like, what isn't there in physically exerting the human body is there in mentally exerting the human body? Because I know you're talking about focusing, but to think that you would have to focus on not crashing for 45 minutes to two hours is insane to me. All right, so we're going to take a quick music break, but we'll be back in a few. All right, everybody, welcome back from the music break. I am here today with William Sawalich, the 14-year-old race car driver who was just telling us about the physical and mental aspects of race car driving before the music break. Now that we're back, William, I guess I would like to know, how do you mentally, and I guess physically, prepare for a race? Uh, the first thing I'll do is get some electrolytes in my body and hydrate. And I will also consult with my coach on how to race that track. And um, he'll tell me like what the car might do later in the race and earlier in the race and what setup we're going to run, how we change the springs and the spring package. Um, and then I also go on YouTube and watch um, other cars race the track to know how to race it as well. <laughs> so, William, I'm actually laughing to myself right now because I also went on YouTube to look at a track except it wasn't a track, it was my driver's test course. And luckily I passed, uh, almost didn't, but that's okay, I passed. <laughs> and um, I'm also laughing because you're 14, which means you don't have a driver's license yet, but you're racing these courses 120 miles per hour. That's insane. What's that like for you? I don't really know how that works. Um, I'm... I'm kind of baffled myself that I can do it. Um, I didn't know I had the skill when I was nine. Uh, and there's, I, I race with uh, men and there's some teenagers out there. Um, and the men are always like, you're 14, you're a little kid. I didn't know you could drive. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And something else I picked out of that little description that you gave was you said that you, when you were first starting out when you were nine, you didn't know that you had the skill until you started, which I thought was really cool because that kind of just sums up trying new things. You know, like you never know if you're going to be good or bad at something. And honestly, even if you're bad at it, if you have fun, you can definitely get better in the long term. You know, you obviously were very gifted from the start. You won your first race. Um, but, you know, I'm not great at everything I do, but I definitely have fun doing my hobbies that I've chosen. So that's really cool. And, you know, speaking of that first big win, William, I guess I'm also curious to know about some of your other accomplishments because I'd love to hear about those. Mm -hmm. So in uh, quarter midgets, I got fourth and fifth uh, nationally in uh, some classes. So classes are just different engines in, in the cars. And in legend cars, I won uh, road course world finals. Uh, that was at Atlanta. And then I, in Legend Cars, I also got, uh, I won the regional championship uh, for the uh, North, Midwest, sorry. And then uh, for late models, I, my only ac accomplishment in three races so far is getting the pole, which is uh, the fastest in qualifying. Oh, only the fastest in qualifying. No big deal. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't really know how I did it. I just went out there. Would you say that you generally hold yourself to high expectations, either in life or in racing? Yes, uh, I don't. I don't really think a lot of myself. I don't try to brag. Um, I I try to do the best I can. Mm -hmm. And it's super great to be like proud of yourself too. Um, that's important for being proud of your accomplishments. Um, and 
I personally, whether it's in business or another aspect of my life, I like to remind myself of this little saying, which it seems like you embody, which is be humble at the highs and hopeful at the lows because um, you want to be humble when you've when you feel like you're on top of the world, uh, and then you also want to be hopeful for the future when you maybe didn't accomplish something that you were hoping to accomplish. So speaking of things that you want to accomplish, what are some of your goals for the future? Mm -hmm. uh, so my goals for the future is uh, to be the first Minnesotan uh, NASCAR driver um, in the top series. And I'm also a first generation, generation race car driver, so I'm the first in my family to do this. And, um, yeah. Yes, Minnesota represent. William and I are both from Minnesota, so that's super cool. Um, William, do you think when you are ready to get your driver's license in a couple of years here, are you going to be treating the roads like a race course, or are you going to be treating them like normal roads? I'm just going to try my best and follow the rules because I don't really know how to parallel park yet. I need to learn that. <laughs> I think that's the answer I expected and also hoped for, but I thought I'd just ask just to make sure. So, William, I think I just want to wrap up this interview by asking you, what is it that you love about racing so much? Um, I guess it's just the competitiveness and going fast and um, also the friends you can make along the way. That's amazing. Uh, so, William, can you just tell everybody really quick where they can find your social media so listeners can continue to follow your story? Yep. So my Facebook and Instagram are at William Swalich Racing and my Twitter is William Swalich Racing. All right, William, unfortunately, this is all the time we have left today. Um, but if any of the listeners want to listen to William's story one more time, you can definitely go to the Build-A-Bear YouTube channel. You'll find a Build-A-Bear radio playlist. And when you click on that playlist, all of the Build-A-Biz episodes will be up and ready for you to listen to. So you can listen to William's story or other stories as well. Um, and definitely follow me on Instagram at isabel.burka, where I will also be posting updates. Thanks until next time. Bye.